And as for every Thursday, uh, we're going to be going over the update that just happened on both NA servers as well as global. Uh, there are a lot of good improvements and trust me, none of them are negative this time. No uh, shop being closed, no unit being removed or whatever. Yeah, only positive changes. So yeah, let's start it. Uh, first of all, we're going to be covering news that affect both servers equally. And then I'll jump to NA and then to EU. So again, you can find timestamps for that either in the pinned comment or in the video chapters uh, on the video. Okay, so let's start with the changes that affect both servers. Uh, first of all, there will be increased support entries for uh, several raids. So first of all, uh, the elite raids and ruptures are getting a double the support entry. So from five daily entries to 10. And for seal, uh, the support entries are jumping up from 10 to 30. So definitely no one will complain anymore. Uh, I don't think anyone is even able to do 30 seal entries per day without losing their mind. So yeah, uh, not a limit on leaves like I expected it to be, but uh, still a good change. A new level to the event dungeon is being added. So uh, the new evolution of Ascension guy that you get uh, 100 uh, little crystals from and 50 bonus for each elite unit you bring uh, is getting a new level and that level is actually rewarding you with 200 of those event items as base and 50 bonus for each elite unit that you bring. Crafting items to the raid shops are being added so these are the items that you require for uh, upgrading your gear in the blacksmithing profession so these can be purchased, the raid ones are uh, five times and the uh, seal items can be purchased two times a week. Uh, the raid items cost 50 uh, tokens per item. Uh, for the seal one, I'm still unsure as the update hasn't arrived on it yet. We're also getting some more quick battle permits. So previously the daily pass reward from one of the quests was one battle permit. It is now getting changed to 10. And this award is of course obtainable to free to play players as well. You do not need to have a summoner pass purchased, meaning that you are finally able to clear those harder dungeons a bit faster instead of just uh, having the sort of filler slot with one battle permit. And now there are some events coming to both servers, uh, NA as well as global. So first of all, the lucky bingo event, uh, you get two four leaf clovers for every Path of Road cleared. I checked in game and confirmed that it is indeed like this. And after doing some calculations, I calculated that the returns for each ticket you use is around seven crystals or so. So definitely not worth doing in this case. I only complete the board once for the mystical scrolls and then whatever you are able to do just leave it at that there's also the mystical summon festival and this one is pretty big as you can see yes the rewards here are correct i checked in game as well you are getting three transcendent scrolls in total uh, there will be 30 mystical scrolls two light and darks and two legendary scrolls so uh, you log in every day for seven days and you will be able to receive all of them pretty easily. And uh, two more miscellaneous changes happening. So first of all, uh, there will be Soul of Luck and Soul of Justice added to the Subjugation Loot Shop. Uh, these are the NAT4 collab unit skill ups uh, being added to the shop where you uh, get those little blue materials from uh, entering Rupture daily. Uh, each of them costs three coins to purchase so basically uh, for each 30 little blue dots that you spend you are able to get a skill up for the nat4 collab units and this will allow you access to both skill them up really fast as well as get free skill ups instead of using those four star devil mode and lastly uh, the prices of items in the exchange center are getting adjusted again we will review them once uh, they are live but i'm still unsure on what to expect but if there are significant changes i will make sure to cover them i'll probably be comparing the same items that i mentioned in the last video just seeing how uh, the prices have been increased or decreased for those so uh, we'll see about that now let's jump into news that are for the NA servers only and 
pretty unexpectedly we're actually getting the new raid uh, the Farakel or as it's called Tree of Heroes so this raid will drop 6 star 2 awakening equipment from it uh, so weapons, accessories and uh, the second weapon or like a shield as I like to call it for Cleave uh, 2 of 3 of these will be really good game changers in my opinion uh, the weapons are pretty bad since they only increase the level of a random active skill by 2 and if you are on NA there's a good chance that you are getting close to maxing them out or you're maybe one away from maxing so Using this weapon is really inefficient for that and seal weapons will still be superior to it. However, the other two items are amazing. So the sub weapon will increase critical rate of all your monsters, meaning that this is sort of a more offensive option to the uh, shield that you get from the seal dungeon. However, if you are focusing on PvP, uh, the Twisted Seal, or uh, no wait, Twisted Marsh, um, shield or sub weapon will still most likely be better as it directly increases the damage from your monsters and the accessory set i think this one is uh, probably by far the best accessory set that currently exists at least for pvp so this one will decrease the damage that your summoner takes in arena battlefield by 11 percent and yes this is huge the previous one decreased the damage that your monsters take uh, usually though our monsters, at least for example in Battlefield, are not getting targeted much and even in Arena, in those more squishier battles, you usually go for the summoners first, so uh, for Battlefield purposes, this will be the optimal set. For Arena and Brawl Arena, you may need to think about whether to use this accessory set or the Twisted Marsh one, based on how you are playing it. And with the new uh, they being the list of course the maximum level of gear is getting increased by one so all of the uh, weapons accessories shields everything like that that you were able to level up to six star awakening level two is now getting increased to uh, awakening level three and to level these up you will need additional materials from uh, several raids uh, the main one will of course be material from this raid but you will also need additional materials from different raids as well NA is of course finally getting the Argon banner, I would say a few months too late maybe, because um, by now people are getting done with their PvE content, even if they are new joiners. But yeah, finally we got it, and in my opinion, uh, in most cases you will want to summon him if you are interested in PvE or you are struggling in raids. But uh, if you're looking specifically for PvP monsters, you may want to skip it. I made already made a video about it several weeks ago, so you can check that out if you're interested in a more detailed opinion on him. Now, some decent changes for the Galagos, and yes, uh, most of these are positive, do not worry. Uh, so first of all, the main bosses at the end of each floor are getting easier. However, the mini bosses that you encounter throughout uh, the way until the min or until the main boss will become harder at least some of them it says so if you're struggling with those uh, you may want to start avoiding them and going to the boss itself as this seems to be an easier route to do however if you want maximum reward you will still need to be hitting those uh, mini elite bosses along the way also the room uh, where you get several statues placed is actually getting more buffs so I'm assuming there will simply be more statues in the room and you will be able to select more buffs as that room was a bit insignificant especially in lower stages where there were only like one or two statues and you could get pretty much the same by just completing a regular stage so a decent buff and a decent alternative if you are struggling to go further and are trying to prepare for the boss and lastly they are getting uh a few new cards added so cards are of course debuffs that you get from Galagos and uh, as you can see some of the examples are immunity to CC effects, uh, increases summoner ultimate gauge and a few more so it should be interesting to play around and uh, see how much they improve the gameplay from there and of course as with any new raid release we are getting a achievement reward as well so these achievements will basically reward you a decent amount of sky stones, some skulls, uh, tokens, and a what's it called? A fireman crystal, I believe, uh, which will uh, allow you to upgrade a gear more efficiently. 
And now uh, we're gonna sw switching to global news. So for the first part, probably the most important part is the Galagos Ruins. Uh, Galagos Ruins is getting the list and this content is super important regardless of the level you are doing it. First of all, uh, the rewards you get from there are super important as you get a new source of uh, five star devil mounts and you can get it around two per week or basically one for every two weeks. Uh, you can also get rewards uh, for these refinement crystals, which will be key in upgrading your gear to higher star grades. So meaning that if your gear is something like a uh, tier C, C, D, and B, uh, if you use four of them during refinement, uh, each of those substats will actually increase uh, the tier of the substat by one. So C, C, D, and B would become B, B, C, and A. And of course, there's more events, uh, not events, but uh, the words like the four star devil mon, uh, three light and dark scrolls per week, and 10 legendary light and dark scroll pieces as well. A few new events coming. So first of all, there will be a Brandia uh, summoning banner added. Uh, she is sort of a damage dealer that we had in the summoner pass from NA before. Uh, I'm not sure if I have her. If I do, I will make sure to build her, test her out and give my opinion on whether it's worth to summon. But if I don't, I most likely will have to skip it for this one as I don't want to give a misleading opinion. and. She also has some hidden multipliers, which are pretty much only findable if you uh, already have her. You're also getting a surprise collection challenge. So this one will only last a week, so make sure to do it. Uh, the quests I've seen here are not too difficult. You will require to do some crafting and the rewards you get are a legendary scroll and six elemental scrolls in total. Uh, Spires of Ascension are getting increased a bit, so uh, the main Spire of Ascension is going up to 120, uh, which is not the final one. In NA we already have up to 140 floors, and Attribute Towers are getting expanded to 90, I believe previously it was around 70. This is also not final, as in NA we already have up to 110 uh, floors. And lastly, there will be a new Starfish from the Deep Sea event. I believe this is something similar to what we already had. However, I will make sure to cover it and give my opinion and calculations on what is worth buying, what is not worth buying, how many uh, points you can get and stuff like that. Uh, of course, keep in mind that this event starts tomorrow. Uh, it is not live yet. Today is a 4th of May and it's only starting in the 5th of May. However, that event will be live in like seven hours or so, so I'll make sure to do a follow-up video either today or early tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, that's about it for the update notices for both NA and global servers. Uh, pretty exciting changes, I would say nothing uh, negative this, ha this time happened, at least. So uh, glad to see that, I'm glad to see I'm going in a better direction. And yeah, see you in the next one.